Good evening. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now. I am Hina Gambhi. The debate over implementation of the National Education Policy 2020 has been reignited. Three states, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Kerala have formed a block against centre's national education policy. For the first time, education ministers from Tamil Nadu and Kerala along with Maharashtra Minister Jitendra Ahwar came together on a stage, terming NEP national exclusion policy. Last month, even West Bengal said it won't implement the national education policy. Now, these non-BJP rule states which are opposing this policy feel that national education policy is a threat to federalism. They feel it is anti-poor. Only elites will have access to education if this is implemented. Three C's, centralization, commercialization and communalization of education form the core of national education policy is the view of these non-BJP ruled states in the country. Now, at the convention organized by All India Students Federation, a resolution was passed which includes a demand to transfer education back to the state list. Need to create an alternative people's policy by recognizing education as a fundamental right. Withdrawal of neat and common university entrance test. Now, Tamil Nadu has already formed a panel to frame its own education policy. Maharashtra has formed two committees to prepare a roadmap. West Bengal has a 10-member committee to have its own education policy. Even West Bengal has rejected centre's education policy. Prime Minister Modi viewers, however, has called this policy futuristic and as per global parameters. He has also said it is not only a means to fight poverty, but it also meets the need of the 21st century. Not just this. Union Education Minister Dharmendra Pradhan recently said some people are trying to create confusion on this national education policy for political reasons. And it was framed on the basis of suggestions received from all sections of the society. So on Urban Debate tonight, let's hear the concerns and try and understand if there is merit in the objections raised by the states or is it just politics? as being claimed by the center. Joining us on the broadcast this evening are my guests. We have with us Vrinda Swaru, former Secretary Education, Krishna Mohan Tripathi, member National Education Policy Draft Committee, Meeta Sen Gupta, Education Strategy and Policy Advisor, Saket Gokhale, TMC spokesperson joining us on the broadcast. We will also be joined by A. Sarvanan, spokesperson of the DMK. Good evening to all of you. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening. Saket Gokhale, let me begin this discussion with you because here we want to understand what the concerns really are of the states or is it pure politics because it is about the future of our country it is about the children and their education which is very very important for any nation's development so let's begin with the concerns of a state like west bengal why would west bengal not like to implement center's national education policy Hi, good evening, Hina. Thank you so much. Uh, I would like to quickly point out our concerns in, you know, in just very short points. Number one, in a country like India, with the kind of diversity we have across states, uh, it's very profane that uh, the union government thinks that you know, it, can, it can suddenly homogenize education in this country. I mean, take a topic like history, for example. Every part of this country has a very rich historical heritage, a very rich cultural heritage. You don't want to homogenize that at the national level, number one. Number two, when you have unified national tests, such as you know the NEET, for example, or the Central University's eligibility test, entrance test, the problem with these tests is that people from different parts of the country have you know, are, are different kinds of skills depending on their social backgrounds, the access to education that they've had. To expect everybody to write this one common exam for admission into central as well as state institutions is a clear way of the central government bullying the states and imposing its, its, its superiority. Number three, and this is the most important part, Prime Minister Narendra Modi 
I don't know if he's been advised properly by his advisors, but he's incredibly wrong when he says that, you know, uh, the national education policy follows a global model. In fact, in the United States, we are seeing that more and more universities are doing away with SATs, which are the common entrance exams. We hear of news coming in from China and from South Korea about how the central uh, centralized examination test put so much of a burden on students that a lot of students are, you know, end up having to kill themselves by suicide. So it has been proven the globe, across the globe, that standardized central tests in a in a big country or in a diverse country do not help. So the purpose really behind this education policy, I mean, instead of asking the states whether the opposition is political, maybe we should ask the center as to why suddenly it wants to impose, you know, they want to impose one language on everybody. They want to impose one elections on everybody. Now they want to create a curriculum which will be deeply saffronized, a curriculum of their version of history, where, you know, Emperor Akbar was defeated in in the in the Battle of, of Kaligat. And, and they want to create, rewrite history. They want to create their own version of it. And that's what they want to indoctrinate the students with. And states like ours will not allow the center to do something as blatant as that. Okay. Interesting. Three important points you have raised and we have two experts also brought on the broadcast this evening. We'll try and get these concerns addressed. But before that, let me go across to A. Sarvanan as well, spokesperson of the DMK, because the latest trigger uh, behind this debate is three states coming together, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Kerala, and demanding that uh, education should be transferred back to the state list, demanding that there is a need to reject national <clears throat> education policy. Education Mr. Policy. Sarvanan, why? Why is Tamil yeah. Nadu opposed to national education policy? What are the problems in the policy per se, is what I want you yes. to tell us. Yeah. The, uh, national education policy is per se regressive. It is not futuristic. It will take us probably 100 years back or 200 years back in terms of uh, giving education to students. The people sitting at Delhi cannot decide what a student should learn at Kanyakumari. They don't know. They will cannot probably understand the needs of the localized uh, phenomena. The state governments are the best equipped to deal with this situation. So we are the most important, the striking aspect of uh, this na national education policy is this bringing of public examinations, board examinations from 5, 8, 10th and 12th. So this is a grave concern to us. What will happen to those students who does not pass these board examinations? Are we going to drop them off? This is contradictory, totally contradictory to the Right to Education Act, where until 14 years of age, primary education is compulsory under the Right to Education Act. And they are also trying to bring in this vocational education. See, there is a push. If you're not going to pass this uh, fifth standard uh, that at the age of 10, you're not going to clear this examination at fifth, the thing is you will not be able to join a regular class. You are supposed to go to a vocational training or something else. This is very, very problematic in the state of Tamil Nadu until 10th standard. That is where we have the first board examinations. Everybody should be compulsorily passed. This is the minimum, minimum quality education we expect. We said we give them this education. They, they take it or not, it's a different thing. But this is, we are obligated to give them this. And the national education policy is totally contrary to this. Now, as pointed out by Mr. Sakat Gokhale, the entrance examinations, they make a grand comeback. You know, all over the world, they say, please, we'll do away with entrance examinations, q -ed. They want entrance examinations for all uh, degree courses undergraduate degree courses. Now they've implemented that in the central universities. And since they have uh, the legislative power, nothing prevents them to say, this is a must. That is how they brutally brought in need. So this is another concern. Yet another concern, and a lot of other concerns are there. Yet another okay. concern would be the three-language formula. Let me finish this, this three-language formula. I think three-language formula is inherently improbable to implement anywhere in the state of Tamil Nadu because we have been doing so well without this three-language formula, with this two-language formula for the last 60, 70 years. This is a settled debate. But the BJP wants to revisit all those debates and break up all this because they want to suppress. They want to deflect the attention on their failures. And last, last but not the least, they're obsessed with homogenization. 
they're obsessed with oneness. It cannot happen. They have to celebrate the plurality. They have to celebrate the cultural differences. But this national education policy does exactly the opposite. That is why we are saying we are opposed to Tamil Nadu. The chief minister okay. said we will not allow national education policy to enter the state of Tamil Nadu. And we have formed okay. a committee to implement Tamil Nadu education policy. Okay. That is what we will implement. Okay, interesting. So, Krishna Mohan Tripathi, we have got six very, very important concerns here that have been raised on the debate. Three, clearly, uh, as Saket Gokhale mentioned, and uh, three uh, specific ones raised by uh, Sarvanan, who is representing the DMK on the show. How will you like to address, firstly, this concern around homogenizing education? This attempt to saffronize education... How legitimate are these concerns? No, not at all. It is not that effort. The only effort is to provide education to all up to the age of uh, 14 years. The, uh, uh, the intention is to implement RTE, right to education policy. Uh, each and every child is to be admitted uh, uh, up to the age of 14 years. And every child, every uh, children, every child is to be given pre-primary education. That is ECC, early child care and education. Uh, it is already provided that uh, by 2030, every child should <laughs> be provided pre-primary education. So the, the the intention is to provide education for all. Uh, Secondly, what uh, Tamil Nadu has expressed this uh, concern, its concern. Actually, the national education educational policy 1968 has given three language formula. And uh, the policy of 86 endorsed it. In the, this policy, the, it, it is, has been given the relaxation that only any two languages may be um, may be introduced up to the level of class fifth. There may be only two languages. So uh, a lot of flexibility have been provided, uh, provided uh, in the policy. So no no language has been made, has have been made compulsory. So it is not correct to say that uh, the uh, three language formula has been um, revised. No, it's not. Multilingualism. Uh, it has been said in the policy that the um, the languages like uh, Tamil, Telugu, Malayalam, Kannad, Sanskrit, uh, they should be the opportunities should be given to um, impart uh, the, uh, these languages. A lot of it, it has been said very emphatically that a lot of literature uh, is there in the uh, in all the languages of uh, india so uh, the most, the uh, the persons from the uh, the teachers from the uh, in order to implement the three language uh, uh, formula the the teachers from tamil nadu from kerala from for malayalam for Tam uh, andhra Telugu, and so they should be hired from those states in the Hindi-speaking states. So it has been very well defined. Uh, there is nothing like uh, the compulsory compulsion of the these three language forms. Um, the only okay. idea is then Mita yes. Sen Gupta. Yes, sir. Then, Meeta Sen Gupta, why is it being said that, you know, there is a three-language formula? Are uh, the concerns political or do you also feel that, you know, there is something that needs to be addressed? And uh, when the centre says that, you know, the stakeholders were consulted, states are of the view that this is an attack on federalism and it will end, uh, it will not, uh, you know, address this very important issue of diversity that we have in our country. Centre wants to impose one policy uh, for all the states, which is not possible in a country like India. 
I, I think the point on the three language policy has been answered very well. The gentleman from the DMK clearly said that this is done to provoke the states. So in fact, I'll, I will honor that by saying, let us then not waste our time in being provoked. Let us not be provoked by the three language policy argument. Tripathi ji has explained very clearly that the policy is definitely for diversity. So I'm not going to engage with that, but I will engage with the diversity problem. I, I, uh, the diversity issue, uh, as Saket has pointed out, is absolutely critical. You cannot homogenize ed education across the states. The states and, and the uh, NEP does not task for homogenization. The NEP does not, and so here is where the problem is. The NEP in itself is, and I will give you three Cs in response to your three Cs. The NEP itself gives out choice. It gives out choice to students to come and go out in and out of college, to rejoin college. In fact, they even in, uh, we even had choice till very recently that you can take your JEE exam twice a year. You have choice. You have chances, multiple chances given to students. That's the second C. And the third C is the challenge that has been given out to educators, schools, uh, at, at the district level, the challenge that has been given out can you map these wonderful dreams that we have envisaged in this policy? And at one level, I will admit- My audio has gone off. Um, at one level, I will admit yes. that- Can you hear me now? That there is a, the, the policy is a guideline. Yes, I can, go ahead. It is a dream, it is aspirational. And the third C is the challenge that has been given out to the districts to be able to uh, build diversity but without homogeneity. Now, where is the problem? The problem is the recent issues that have cropped up. The CUET, the policy had said that it should not be made compulsory, but it seems to have been made compulsory right now. Each time, uh, each time we try to have a debate about diversity, we come back to the Saket very rightly pointed out. We come back to this thing of everybody wants the same thing to happen. That's that's the that's the narrative that goes along. That is not possible in a wonderful country like India. We have regional knowledge. We have rich uh, uh, tribal knowledge. We have so many. We have human libraries. We are not a textbook nation. We have human libraries. We are we are in the digital age where the digital and the human are integrating. This is the beautiful challenge. And in fact, I would be. I'm sorry if this sounds controversial, but I would actually love to see the states come up with their own initiatives to say this is where the, the central idea does not work for us and therefore we will create additional supplementary things that will work for us. If truly, and this is where politics really messes the things up and I, honestly I don't understand politics, but if truly we care about the students, this combination of the state and the and, and the central uh, effort, if it is pro-student truly, then what we are talking about as an alternative will not, not be seen as against. I, this formulation of an alternate being against the center, I think is probably something that is simply a talking point. But if you truly care about the student, you will have to respond to student needs. You will have to be close to the student. You will have to be close to the ground. You will have to give them the, the fundamentals of addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, what we call foundational uh, learning, of course. But do, does everybody have to learn right. it exactly the same way? No. Okay, interesting points there. Yeah. Let's go across to Vrinda yes. Sarup as well, former Secretary of Education, also live with us on the broadcast this evening. And then I'll get uh, Saket as well as Sarvanan to respond to the points uh, that my guests have made about uh, the concerns that they had raised. Uh, okay, Saket, uh, I think you're not able to hear. We'll quickly try and fix that for you. Uh, but Ms. Vrinda Sarup, the question is, does this national education policy address the needs of the students really? Because we are seeing concerns concerns from some states, southern states now, three of them have come together, Tamil Nadu, Maharashtra and Kerala, West Bengal was already opposed to this national education policy and you know most of them have a view that this is anti-poor, it will only help a segment of students and not just this, that centre is trying to homogenize education. How will you like to address these concerns? Is it pure politics or do you think there is merit in the points that states are making and maybe something can be done to address these? Relate to you, uh, 
what my experience in government has been, and that is that whenever there is a national policy on education which is brought out, it is first and foremost, it's an intent of the government. And this is a broad direction in which the country should be moving in the sector of education. Having said that, there is also a consultative process which is normally undertaken when po such policies are made and uh, consultations with states, consultations with uh, the non-governmental sector, educationists, etc. There are wide consultations before the draft is finalized and so on. The third point is that once the policy has been announced, even after that, this is a broad intention. There is a lot of space for designing, for localizing, for contextualizing, because India is a very vast and diverse country. So there is always scope to bring, uh, you know, state uh, uh, ways of doing things. What will work in one state will not work. So programs, strategies, which are actually the implementation aspect of a policy, which actually takes it to the ground, to the schools, uh, these are things in which states play a major role because, after all, the whole state uh, education system, the public education system, is run by the state governments. So I think everybody realizes that this is a, a, a broad policy direction, and the states definitely contribute and must contribute to getting these programs and implementing the policy in its in proper form and intent. That's important what you're telling us. So this is a broad direction that center has given to the states, Ms. Vrinda Swaroop, and you're telling us that states can have their own policy, have their own education policy, uh, taking, you know, some sort of a direction from this particular national education policy. It is not mandatory for every state to implement it in total. No, no, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that these are, you know, any policy has a lot of segments to it. Now, let's take school education. So if school education says that, you know, we must get all children into school, we must get everybody to complete education till class 12, I don't think there is any difference anywhere in the system uh, that anybody will have a different view. Now, whether somebody builds those schools faster, whether those, uh, some states build those schools, uh, you know, over a period of time, this will depend on each state. But I think everybody will move in the same direction because everybody wants, their, wants the children of the state to complete 12 years of uh, uh, K, uh, K, uh, kindergarten to class 12, uh, a full, good quality education. Somebody is going to do teacher recruitment faster. Somebody is going to go a little slower. But these differences arise. But these are differences of implementation. Broad directions, I don't think there is a great difficulty in accepting that. And where there is room and scope for states to put in their own uh, priorities or, or for them to, you know, fast track some aspect, uh, these differences have already always existed in India. And I'm sure... Even here, some will move faster, some will move slower. So uh, I think it's a broad direction which everybody moves in. Okay, That's... Saket Gokhale and A. Sarvanan, how will you like to respond? Saket first. Yeah, I mean, you know, this is like saying you can have it in any color you want as long as it's black. It's not, a, it's, there, is, there is no framework. And the problem is, you know, we're sitting and they would like us to see the national education policy in and by itself. But we also need to look at the intent behind it. The government has issued notifications from time to time saying PhD topics need to only be in national interest of India, and that is what the government will decide. They have removed chapters on a lot of people as far as history is concerned. The government has rewritten education policies here and there. Today, you have, you know, people have to, the doctors have to take so the right charvaka. Now, sorry to interrupt. So right now, are you seeing the intent or the content? <laughs> What is more See, important both, for both. a state like West Bengal? The intent both. of the government here because both. it's center or you're looking both. at the content that's there? The content and intent go hand in hand. Like I said, for example, earlier, centralized exams are not, the world has accepted that they're not the way forward. Today, you have exams being conducted for central universities. 
This is as simple as saying that, you know, I'm going to teach what is important in my state, and apparently the policy gives me the freedom to do that. But if you're going to test the students from my state also for entry into a central education, uh, into a central university on completely different subjects, then what's the point of me having a local state policy at all? I mean, you're going to be testing them on your own parameters. So where is the independence that I have as a state to frame the curriculum, to frame the education policy according to the needs, the special needs of the student in my state? Okay. So you're saying centralized exam structure is not going to work in a country like India, though we do have JEE, NEET, and some other centralized exams which uh, are conducted from time to time. Uh, I'll get Vrinda Swaroop to respond to that. But before that, let Sarvanan also make his point. Yes, Sarvanan. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. See, when we talk about this national education policy, they are saying that uh, they will improve uh, the uh, gross enrollment ratio. I think that is the higher point, the bigger point the NEP is talking about, that they will improve the gross enrollment ratio to around 50 by 2030 or 35. But Tamil Nadu is already having a 51.1 uh, percentage. That's a GER. So how will a policy that wants to improve GER will help us? We are already ahead of that. This is one thing. Yet another thing is the union government is not spending enough on education. That is a bigger problem. See, they have done, this is not inclusive at all. This NEP is not inclusive. It is creating barriers and it excludes NSIGE. That is a scheme for women belonging to scheduled caste and scheduled tribe. Every year, I think 10,000 rupees or 3,000 rupees will be deposited into their accounts. And uh, while they study, it will be accrued and it will be given to them. It will be used for their educational expenses. In the last budget, the uh, union government has stopped it, stopped those schemes. And for rural education, nothing is being done. They are only promoting Navodaya schools, Kendriya Vidyalaya schools, and other uh, things which, which cater to the elites. So it is not inclusive at all. Whereas the state of Tamil Nadu, uh, Madam uh, Meeta was talking okay. about how the, just a moment, let me finish this. How states, I want to know how states do it differently because of this COVID interruption. We, we came into power in 2021 May. We immediately implemented two schemes, Ennum Yeltum, Illam Thedi Kalvi. So who are all in the rural areas who are all not able to get proper thing about uh, the alphabets and numerals, the KG and just above them. We are going to their schools, we are going to their residences and teaching them. The other class, Illam yeah, yeah, Kalvi, what we are okay. doing is we are recruiting the uh, local uh, students, higher students, college students to teach people, to teach the uh, younger students so that they'll be benefited because of this COVID okay. breakdown in the education. COVID is the biggest destroyer of access to education. So we are having so many schemes which cater to okay. the local population. So leave it to us. And education should definitely but be... NEP, I don't think it's list. going to stop you from continuing with these schemes. This See, is Sarvan, and I don't think this, this national uh, no, you know, I, education I, I policy is going to I'll stop any state Kina. from doing what it wants to no, do no, no, in no. the field Kina, of education. Kina, what, Correct me if I'm wrong. Kina, I'll, I'll explain that to you. I'll explain that to you. If there is a central government scheme, the government will say, you know what, they are doing this. We will release funds to you only if you follow the scheme. This is happening in all the other sectors. Definitely, this will happen here also. We are creating funds, and our funds, we are putting it in our programs. The union government will come and say, no, no, this is mandated under the NEP. Use your funds for this NEP scheme. You want to do your own scheme, you do it. We are okay. not bothered. Then we go for funds, and we have improved funds. 32,000 crore was the budget okay. of uh, education in Tamil Nadu in the last thing. This year, we have increased to 30, 35,000 crores, almost a 3,000 crore jump. So our leader, Mr. Okay. M.K. Stalin, has today announced okay. that uh, Kamra, just I'll finish this, Hina. Kamra I like Ms. Vrinda oh, Swaroop to address this issue of no, no. funds and this, you know, argument coming again and again yeah, that this, this policy is anti-poor. It is only going to favor elites. I want you to yeah, address yeah. Hina, the you know, concerns that have been point. raised. I'll finish this, Hina. I'll finish this. I'll just finish this. Our leader, very Mr. Quickly, Stalin, very has, quickly, sir. Yeah, our leader, Mr. M.K. Stalin, has proclaimed that during Mr. Kamrad's school rule, it was the golden period of primary education. During uh, our great leader, Dr. Kalinger's rule, it was the golden period for college education. And he has declared that this DMK rule will be right. the golden period for higher education. So please don't meddle with us. We'll take care of ourselves. Uh, the GER is the okay. proof of the pudding. Vrinda Swaroop.
Yeah. So, so he now on doing Vindasaru, the points that respond. yeah, yeah, on the points that you have flagged for us. I think what I'm hearing in this debate is really an issue about, uh, you know, the implementation side of the national education policy, and uh, implementation is always something with w in which the center and the state do dialogue. And as I said in my opening remarks. What type of schemes should be there? How should you balance uh, states which are better educational infrastructure vis-a-vis -vis states which are still catching up with that infrastructure? These are items of implementation of programmatic design, which actually go much beyond the, the policy intent. And this is the detailing of the policy. So there is a consultative process always inherent in this because as I said, the implementation remains entirely with the states. And how the center and the state will, uh, you know, pool their resources together to get the best bang for the buck. This is something which is a continuous dialogue between the center and the state, and that's our federal polity. So uh, states are assertive, and the center uh, listens, and a lot of designing changes because of, uh, you know, what the states require. So this is a continuous dialogue, and I think it will continue uh, because the policy is, in my view, fairly young, and things are still to be spelt out, and its implementation design, its program of action is still to emerge uh, from what I can see. The second question that you are raising about okay. whether Some this is pro-poor yes. pro or not, uh, I think anything which is invested in education is pro-poor, whether the state does it itself or the center does it to help the state. I think education is the biggest liberator, and the more investment we make in education as a country, the better it is. Okay, interesting. So you're saying that probably, you know, the way consultations have already happened now there is a need to have more consultations center and states need to come together on the table and discuss the issues that states are facing in implementing uh, something that center says uh, is a futuristic policy which will help india uh, in a big way krishna mohan tripathi on the issue that saket gokhale had raised earlier and that's an important one too that centralized exam system is not going to work in a country like india already we know on neat issues as well there have been so many issues Tamil Nadu is completely against NEET so what is the uh, what is it that you will like to say to address his issue on centralized exam system because the education mm -hmm. curriculum is different in every state so far as the uh, joint, uh, combined interest test examination uh, it has been uh, provided by the UGC, uh, as, as far as I know, it has not been given in the policy. So it is uh, a type of implementation strategy adapted by UGC. Uh, secondly, uh, with regards to uh, school education, a, a lot of uh, decentralized system have been provided there. There is a system of uh, uh, school complex, which which provides. It, it has been also uh, reiterated. It, the, the concept of school complex is given in the Kothari Commission report. Now it has been emphasized in order to improve the uh, the support system. The a new model of uh, mm, governance. Uh, school uh, complex is a new model of governance. So, so uh, it has been uh, emphasized to go for this. Uh, That's not ECC, the yes. Of centralization. Cent what do we? So sorry, but we have a Could you just repeat your point? We could not hear you. Yes. No, I'm saying with due respect, sir, but you're not.
talking about the point of centralization of, of eligibility examinations. That is a core issue. You know, you have people who can afford to pay money, go to coaching classes, and people who cannot afford to write these central exams, they're not able to, they're not able to pass these exams. I mean, you're not addressing in your entire uh, argument right now, you've not addressed this point about centralization of, of eligibility exams. Eligibility examination for, for the admission Mohan in for the for uh, admission in universities, colleges, medical colleges, and universities, central universities. Uh, 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 yes, I think, in fact, uh, the states are opposed to CUET as well as NEET. Yes, it it is not as a result of this new educational policy. No, mandates. So why is that new education policy mandate? But CUET is this common university entrance test, sir. They mandated. They mandated the new education policy mandates an entrance yes. examination mandate. for across the spectrum for all colleges. Yes, Mr. Krishna Mohan Tripathi is responding. Yes, Sarvanan. Mr. Krishna Mohan. So it has Tripathi. not been uh, provided. This common university the... entrance test. No, no, it is not provided in the policy. I'm, uh, if he says so. Now the there? draft person is saying this, we know how much thought went into this policy in the first place. If the drafting committee is not aware of what the provisions of the policy are. I mean, how much thought really was put into this policy at all by the central government? I think. Vrinda Suru, so would you like to come in? You know, the issue about entrance exams to colleges is an entirely different cup of tea. And it emanates from the fact that all states have their own boards of examination and they mark their students differently. And for, a cent and for universities to start going simply by school exam results was proving to be very difficult because some states are liberal in their marking and some are not. And that is the dilemma which has haunted us for a long time. And various solutions have been tried to, you know, move around that. Because if you ignore the school leaving exam also, it becomes very difficult because then the children are not serious about school leaving exams, which is supposed to be the best benchmark to show whether this student has attained uh, knowledge and thinking and uh, uh, you know reasoning capacity which is required to, at the time when he or she is leaving school. So school exams are very important and at the same time differential marking makes it very difficult on an all India level to see how am I going to place this child vis-a-vis -vis another state's, uh, uh, you know, uh, report card on whether this child is is 80 percent or is he going to get 85 percent or what do you do? Because kids come with 90 percent from some yeah. states and some states are very tough. If they get 60 percent from a school leaving exam, it's considered heroic. So this is the dilemma at the national level because universities are common for everybody. Any student can study in any part of the country. Yeah. So th this, you know, these entrance exams actually emanate from this difficulty, not from any other purpose. Sorry, but uh, yeah. I disagree. Yeah, yeah. I uh, uh, Saket Gokhale, yeah. quick response then, Sarvanan. Yeah. I'll give you an example. I mean, I, I slightly differ from what Ms. Ms. Saroop said here because two things. One, when Indian students go overseas, they do not have to write a centralized examination. Grade point averages are calculated by giving weightage to different parameters, number one. Number two, engineering colleges today for admission to central universities have a different exam. For state, there is a separate exam. For NEET, even if you want to get into a state medical college or a central, you still have to write that one exam. So what is, where is the role of the states as far as the NEET is concerned? I mean, if I'm, if I'm from Tamil Nadu, if I'm from West Bengal, and I'm taking admission in a medical college in my state, why do I have to write a centralized exam for that? Mr. Gokhale, this is a yeah. path which okay. all of us have gone down. Uh, and I remember I, when I was working in the state government, we had our own entrance exams for medical and for engineering colleges. And after a point, I think many states realized that there's no point in 
uh, denying your own students, excluding them from an All India exam. So many states have agreed to participate in an All India exam, but they still draw their state lists. So there are variations. All I'm saying is that there is no exclusionary factor here. These are, you know, these are difficulties which we all face for admissions. And uh, if you were a vice chancellor, how would you distinguish a child who is get, getting different marks and coming from different states? You don't want to be unfair. So I'm, I, yeah. though, though I agree with you, though Can I, I agree, that? though Can I, I answer that, Tina? One, if I were a vice time, chancellor, time. yes, so that's a very important yeah. point you have raised. The idea it yeah. seems is to streamline the process so that a child yeah. also has more options, not just in one it's, state yeah. but across the country. Yeah. It's not across it's the country, not. and this no, is no, 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 nowhere, no, no. nowhere. It, it, just Mr. Gokhale, nowhere it, is the state barred suck it, from running Gokhale, its own second, exams. Never finish. Yeah, so I mean, there are no state. There is no bar from a state doing its own entrance exams. And I know I've done it in my states where I work. So uh, these are options and we are hmm. not saying either or is good. There are difficulties in a centralized test also. Hmm. I fully agree with you. And I'm one of those who champions that a school leaving hmm. exam should get priority or should have a very strong say in the hmm. kind of assessments that you're doing. Okay. So whether you go abroad to do okay. through a SAT exam or, or you know, GMAT, these are also there. This national education policy does not restrict states from doing what it wants to. If it indeed wants to have its own exam, this policy is not really stopping. A. Sarvanan, quick response. Yeah, yeah. See, uh, the, it is not about the question of whether it is prohibiting the state governments or not. It mandates. The national education policy makes it, it says now in the draft that it is optional, but the national education policy is indeed talking about entrance examinations for all courses, leave engineering and medicine. For every degree course, you'll have to jo join, uh, go through an entrance examination. That is what it says. And it now says uh, technically that it is optional, but we know how the union government pushes it. The national education policy is smacking off RSS agenda. It is exclusionary. When we speak of coaching okay. classes, when we sorry, speak of entrance okay. examinations, it is Sarvanan directly... Sarvanan continues to say that this policy moment. is Tina, exclusionary. Meeta Sen Gupta, moment, you know, Tina. some experts have also Tina, suggested that implementation of this. this national education policy is going to require extensive amendments to various union and the state legislations. Uh, how will you like to respond to that? And also uh, what Mr. Sarvanan is saying. I think I'd actually like to go back to some very basic concepts. One, a policy by definition is a guiding principle, a guru vakya. It is not a scheme. It is not a rule. It is not something that has to be followed. Secondly, the, uh, new, uh, the new education policy, which was approved in 2020, does talk about a central university's exam, but it explicitly says that it must be voluntary and must not be made compulsory. In its implementation right now, what we are observing is that suddenly there is some sort of a, a, a trend that states seem to be saying, Yes, we agree with you that we will take on the CU, CUT as compulsory, which is not what the policy said. So it's not a policy problem. It is an implementation problem, as uh, uh, Swaroop, ma'am uh, Swaroop ma has just said. The third thing that she has just said, which I would like to reiterate, because this is really, really important, is that this difference in, in liberal marking and strict marking is, is exactly what is the most troublesome thing for students. If you come from a state which has liberal marking and you suddenly land up in a course that is too difficult to you, for you, this is where we see student stress. This is where we see student suicides. We have to be able to help students. Think of the student perspective in the whole thing. I'm reframing it as a student thing. And I'm taking it away from all the, the big state versus center thing because what we care about is student progress over here. And, and the student who has come from a liberal marking system will not survive in a, in a tougher environment. The student has to be given an honest assessment of whether they will be able to make it in the next thing, the degree of difficulty that they will face. That mm. honest assessment is not possible mm. without having some information about the comparative 
liberalness of each of these exams or strictness of these exams? What do you do to, what can we do? What can we do over here as assessors and people who care? We can create a central exam, then we can compare. Okay, somebody who got 60% here got 30% here. Somebody got 60% here got 80% here. Then you can do that statistical calibration. Right. For this, the CUET no, does no, no, not no. need to be made compulsory. For this, yeah. you do not need the CUET to be made compulsory. For It just needs to be statistical sampling. And that is what the policy has said. So let us not, okay. I'm not defending the policy as such, but I'm saying the policy specifically, in terms of the words used, has said that you must have this information so that we can benefit students. I, I think this yeah. clarification yeah. is really important. Yeah. Hina, Hina, the thing is, only thing... Okay, the problematic Sarvanan, quick, thing quick with closing liberal, comment. Very yeah, quickly, yeah, please. The problematic, thing, yeah, yeah. the problematic thing with this liberal and illiberal math is, I think that is a manufactured thing. And you are trying to avoid this no, evil, no, 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 and you are trying to bring in another evil. You are trying to bring in another evil, which is coaching class mafia. Tell me which entrance examination, is, which student is taking any entrance examination without a coaching class, and how will rural students have access, even though they may have money, Will they have coaching classes at rural areas? This is for the precise reason we are opposing these entrance examinations. It is discriminatory. And there is a big okay, mafia okay. out there. Krishna Mohan Tripathi, I want to give you last 10 seconds. Very quickly, closing comments. I'm completely out of time now. The, the, the policy uh, uh, provides uh, uh, opportunities for all sorts of students whether they are poor, they are richer. Uh, it, is, uh, uh, it is for the development of good moral character to, of the children. The, uh, the moral um, character, RSS. What does moral character got to do with education? That is such an RSS life. What do you mean by moral no, no, character? No, no. That no, is no. Why no. Moral, this is backing of RSS agenda. This is no, clear no, it's RSS not agenda. A RSS agenda. Uh, through what education, we, we, we create good citizens. What, what Plato has said, uh, that education which makes good citizens. So no, we, no, we, no, we... Government should not be imposing morality on... Good citizens. Yeah, government Pardon? should not be imposing morality on students. No, no, we, we are not good imposing... We, we, we are we are not for, uh, proposing, but the character building, the character formation, creating good human beings, it is the purpose of uh, new educational policy. So we want to create we are good bad human of this country. We, we grow up without the NEP, so you're saying we don't have a character, we are bad human beings, because we didn't grow up with the NEP. This is such a this is no, such an no, RSS no, not that. No. The intention of the policy is to create good human beings. Jin mein daya ho, karuda ho, prem ho, sadbhav ho, shalinta ho, shishtachar ho, nishkam. There is a math science English. If karuna or ye also full science. Okay, I think that's the... Okay, okay. I think he's trying to suggest that, you know, in a way it's providing direction, but there are some legitimate points that states have also raised. It was a rather interesting discussion that we had today, and I hope uh, that, you know, some uh, doubts have been cleared, but many still remain, and uh, we can really hope that the implementation of this policy eventually happens in the interest of students, neither centre nor states, because it is about students... Uh, children, the future of our country and uh, uh, like one of our guests also mentioned that there's probably a need to have more consultation. Maybe centre and states can again sit together uh, and iron out the differences or the concerns that are there so that eventually it helps the students instead of, uh, uh, you know, being against uh, the interest of the students. I would like to thank all my guests. Thank you very much for joining us here on Urban Debate on Mirror Now this evening. We'll of course be tracking the story closely ahead as well. Heading into a short break.